Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is David Chesney, White Rock, B.C. City Councilor and Editor of the White Rock Sun. Welcome to the show, David. Thank you very much, Jim. Good to be back with you. Your monthly community conversation that happened last weekend, what were people chatting about there? Well, a wide variety of topics, uh, you know, from the big to small. Jim, I think, uh, you know, we've, we've talked about uh, the community conversation, uh, you know, so a number of times now, and I always appreciate having the opportunity to spread the word far and wide. I feel like the Johnny Appleseed, and it's just so gratifying to have residents come up to you. Uh, I'm getting more and more people that I've never seen before, uh, we've talked before about the usual suspects that are uh, already very engaged in the community, but people coming up at the end of the meeting and just saying, you know, it's just so wonderful to be able to come and talk to uh, uh, an elected official in a very relaxed, informal atmosphere. Thank you very much for doing this. And uh, that's what it, what it was always about was for people to have that opportunity. And as I say, I still know that uh, at some point in time, uh, with anything that's new like this, it'll take time to grow. I didn't expect it was going to happen overnight. And as I've said before, whether there's 200 or two people, it uh, doesn't matter to me. The numbers don't uh, don't deem a success or failure to me. Um, so it's just it's, it's very thrilling for me to have people come up and uh, endorse exactly what we're happening. And I just tell them, well, if you really would like to, to see this movement grow, Bring a friend, bring a neighbor, uh, you know, that's that's how this will grow, and I think, you know, we'll have more of an impact uh, on City Hall and my fellow councillors uh, if if we have bigger numbers. At the present time, we're hovering between 30 to 40, been fairly consistent. A few drop off, a few new ones come. So, as I've said to them, if, if every one of you brought a guest, a friend with you, next time it would be 80 people, the next meeting would be 160 and in a matter of four meetings, we'd have 320 people. The arithmetic is really very easy, uh, and that's that's my goal. And I I, I won't give up until uh, you know my term is over. Uh, and if I if I run again, I'll just continue to build on it. I will continue to have these community conversations. They were not created to be a bitch session or have people be able to yell at anybody. Uh, I always always tried to move it towards the very productive and positive messaging and that's becoming more and more the people that uh you know are angry at the city and i've said this before they're the first people that will turn up to an event like this but it's the great unwashed that i hope to reach and and slowly but surely we're starting to do that and i think once it really catches fire it will become i hope a precedent for every community throughout the lower mainland across bc and all the rest of canada to operate a much more open and communicative form of government. Do you ever have a preset agenda on what you're going to talk about? Not really. Uh, no, I pretty much uh, open the meeting with uh, just welcoming people and just asking them what's on their mind. Um, I'm, I may have some announcements that I'll make that people, uh, you know, uh, if we have an important meeting coming up in the community like a water uh, uh, conference or anything like that, I always want to make sure people are well aware of the various things that are coming up, uh, what's coming up on council at Monday night, uh, and I just urge people to, to try to be engaged. Uh, but no, it's, you know, uh, uh, again, one of the real Kodak moments after one of the meetings was when somebody walked up to me and said, gee, Dave, you hardly got a chance to say anything. And I said, perfect. I have plenty of soapboxes, including the White Rock Sun, and my duties as a counselor to have my my opinion known. So this is this is not called the Chesney conversation. It's called the community conversation. And not only to be able to talk to me, but to talk to each other. Well, I think the word conversation is so important because most city councils will allow you to make a presentation where you can talk, say, four or five minutes, and then they cut you off. But it's not a conversation. It's very much a one-way thing. And I've noticed so often that as a citizen presents their concerns or solution to a problem, uh, half the councillors are out wandering out, getting coffee, getting a donut. They're not even listening. No. Uh, and, you know, that every once in a while, and we had this happen uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, 
that uh, an elderly couple turned up at council, and they had apparently been trying to get the road fixed in front of their house for nigh on 10 years. They'd been writing letters, uh, doing everything they possibly thought that they could do, and finally, out of sheer desperation, they turned up at a council meeting. And I'm very happy to say that uh, uh, the squeaky wheel got the grease. Uh, you know, it, uh, until somebody brings it to our attention, and that's not to say that's going to happen every single time, but I think the majority of us council members, I know, uh, following the presentation from this couple uh, about the sad state of the repair of the road in front of their place and water pooling and people can't walk on the sidewalk because it gets covered with water. I can't possibly walk, Neither can, n none of us in the city can possibly walk every single street every single week. So we we rely on the community and if if this receives enough publicity that this happened, I hope that other members of the community will go, hey, I should do that. Uh, I love to see people come to council meetings and appear as a delegation. Um, and I think the more that we can we can encourage that, and if we can hold up something and saying, you know, here's the latest example. Mr. and Mrs. Penny came and I addressed council and told us that they had a problem and they've been trying for years to get somebody to listen to them to no avail. Um, we looked into it and it appears that bada bing, bada bang, bada boom, we can move them up to the top of the list. David, what would you rather hear? Somebody complaining about some, but something or someone outlining a concern and then bringing you possible solutions for it? Well, I think the latter would be, uh, you know, a very welcome, uh, means of approaching anybody. And, and hopefully that, you know, that's what we, we will, uh, be able to build an environment where we nurture that type of communication. I don't know that anybody ever, uh, that most people will have a solution. But they might. These people live right there. They see what happens on a day-to-day -day basis. They're the experts. They know how it's wrong, why it's wrong. You know, the sidewalk in this particular two-block stretch was built at road grade. It was made out of paving stones. It's level with the road. The road's sinking. Water pools. Now the people that walk along there, uh, if they stay on the sidewalk, they risk, if a car comes by, of getting soaked from head to toe. So they now have to walk out across the street onto the other side of the street where there's no crosswalk. And we have a lot of seniors that live in our community. It's dangerous for anybody be, to be enabled or to try to traverse the streets that way. So, um, you know, the, the, the people that live in the community, who better knows uh, the problems with their neighborhood than them? So if, you know, if we can set up some type of thing, I mean, some communities have set up almost like a block watch they repre they you know they almost have a, a their own little council where they have somebody that will end up coming and speaking for that quadrant or that section of the city. Uh, again, this is a wonderful thing. It brings communities together. Before we started our conversation on the air here, Jim, I told you that I'm very excited. Uh, Fraser Health has a conference this Thursday, uh, and their keynote speaker, the title is Happy or Healthy Communities. And there's a Vancouver author called Charles Montgomery that has written a book called Happy City that is, I think it's now two years old, but it's it's gone around the world and uh, cities all over the world have taken this book and embraced it uh, on how to make your city a happy city, uh, celebrating the positive things, the good things, and how can we make the city business or the city operate uh, more effectively to make it a, a more conducive city uh, and a happy city where the people live. And at the, the first, the, the first paragraph, or the first, uh, chapter in the book talks about, uh, the author going to, uh, Bogota and the mayor of the city, Perlosa, I think was his name, uh, anyways, the city was, you know, filled with crime and drug cartels and it was dirty and people were afraid to walk the streets and pollution was terrible, so he was elected. And one of the first things he did was he created a car-free day. Now, that seems like a rather small yet a very big endeavor, but the immediate reaction within the community was overwhelmingly positive because people now parked their cars and they walked. And when you walk, you stop and you talk to your neighbor and you say hello to them and ask them what their dog's name is or how long have you been growing those plants in your front yard or whatever it might be. So just that one single thing, and there was many other things that they eventually did, but just a small thing like making a car-free day one day, 
We've seen it. You've seen it in Vancouver on Commercial Drive. Tens of thousands of people turn out uh, for Car Free Sunday. Uh, Main Street, I think Kitsilano is now doing one. Talk about bringing a community together. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. And the next time we talk, I'll have a, a, the opportunity to, to give you a better overview. But if anybody's uh, listening to this and has, has a, any desire, book I'm sure is in the library. I bought mine at Chapters, but it's uh, Charles Montgomery, Vancouver author. And he identified that what caught me right off the bat is that I think in 2004, uh, how he got turned on to the mayor of Bogota was uh, there was a United Nations Habitat Conference in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, in his words, at the Trade and Convention Center, and leaders from all over the world were here. And he said, when this gentleman from Bogota, the mayor got up and talked about what he was doing in his city, Almost instantaneously, hundreds of world leaders stood up and gave him a standing ovation. So uh, I just get so jazzed when I read something like that. Uh, and in such a small little community that I call home, White Rock, our city by the sea, with two square miles and only 19,000 people, boy, if there's one city that could get on the stick with this right away, it's us, uh, as opposed to a city the size of Vancouver. I think probably Gregor Robertson... I'm sure has read this book, uh, his bike lanes, his, you know, uh, the green mayor that, that he is. Uh, I, I'm, I would, I would, I would lay dollars to donuts. He's well aware of this book. And I think invariably he's in the back of his mind trying to make a happy city. But boy, a city the size of Vancouver just in square miles and the number of people. It's pretty hard to get a movement going there. I think we've got the golden opportunity. And that will be my next phase to, to add on to the community conversation. We'll have more with David Chesney right after the break. Bird Dog, the ultimate tribute to the Everly Brothers and Simon and Garfunkel. Coming to Mission White Rock, West Vancouver. Buy online and save at ontourtickets.com. In Goddard, we trust. Welcome back. We're speaking with David Chesney. Something that happened in Vancouver that perhaps other people in the country aren't aware of is that CP Rail had this corridor through the west side of the city that they hadn't used for years and years and years. So people started planting community gardens and so on on this CP property, but they had a dispute with the city. They wanted tens and tens of millions of dollars for the city to buy it. Vancouver said they couldn't afford it. So CP ripped up all these community gardens. A year later, they now have an agreement for Vancouver to buy it for $55 million. A huge green strip through the city. Is that something White Rock is looking at? Because you have a rail line that runs right along your waterfront separating the residents from the ocean. Well, it's been a, a big conversation. Our mayor, prior to the last election, uh, vowed that he would have those rail lines moved. Um, I don't think that uh, that they're going to be moving anytime soon. Uh, BNSF, the rail line that runs through White Rock South Surrey here, uh, just spent $35 million on upgrading the system uh, on the other side of Crescent Beach towards Highway 99, and are about to spend another $50 million for a swing bridge. I don't think, given those kind of expenditures, they plan on moving that line anytime soon. Mayor Hepner, Diane Watts, uh, of course, this flared up, and I hate to use the analogy, uh, probably a better ana- analogy, but uh, this came to light when the uh, Lac Megantic rail disaster happened, and all of a sudden people that were living here uh, in close proximity to these train tracks went, oh my God, uh, given the dangerous goods that are dragged by our front door, I mean, that Bakken oil comes by our front door as well as chlorine, gas, jet fuel, uh, there's a lot of very dangerous toxic goods that are that are dragged by or carried along that rail line. So uh, Surrey and White Rock had a, a bit of a knee-jerk reaction with the Lemigantic uh, situation. And I think as a lot of communities did, they went, oh, hang on a minute here. Uh, look what we've got running through our front yard. So there was a, a quickly, hastily called meeting by Surrey that they invited White Rock and four or 500 people turned out and uh, then they put the pictures away, and uh, nothing more was ever said about it. Uh, our mayor continued to push hard and heavy to try to uh, uh, have, the, have the rail line relocated, 
but uh, given that it would be in the hundreds of millions to relocate that line. And, of course, other residents of Surrey are saying to the Surrey Mayor Linda Hepner, hang on a minute here. Before you spend hundreds of millions of dollars to appease a very small portion of the Surrey residents, those in Crescent Beach along the rail line, uh, give it some serious thought because you're also going to have to relocate that rail line and now you'll be running it through someone else's neighborhood. Well, the couple, a couple of the uh, exploratory routes that they've identified where that line could go would not go through as heavy a residential area as we have here in White Rock and Crescent Beach. I mean, there are houses that literally you could sit on a balcony and flip a beer can off and hit the train tracks. There's Some of the houses are incredibly close, as they are in Crescent Beach. So um, those people, I don't know how they live that close to the train tracks, to be very truthful. Uh, I've lived in a number of different locations on the hillside in White Rock. And after a while, you do get used to the noise, but we've got these 130-car coal trains rumbling through our town now, and uh, they seem to be less of them now, I think, just simply because the world market, India and China, have just said, we've got to get out of burning this uh, this coal dirt, is what it basically burns down, boils down to. It doesn't produce much heat, but it's dirt, dirt cheap. They take it through open pit mining, they just scoop it out of the ground with a front end loader and put it onto the train, and of course, it, a great deal of that blows off in transit. So Washington and Oregon have said, no, you're not shipping that stuff out of here. So it's all heading for Vancouver now, and that's the big reason they want to build a new bridge over where the Dees Island Tunnel is, uh, to not only get the, the ships up to take that coal out of here from the Surrey docks, but to generally, this is they're, they're building that bridge for one reason and one reason only, and that is to commercialize the Fraser River. Uh, and that may not be a bad thing, but I really, uh, you know, if you've ever been down near Steveston at low tide, I don't know how they would keep the front mouth of the Fraser River dredged out enough that they could bring up uh, big boats in there on a regular basis. There's not a lot of draw down there. That China is getting away from coal, evident that they've had their first mass layoff of coal miners, over a million and a half people told to find work elsewhere. Yes, uh, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, and, and they've sent world, word to the world uh, that they are getting out of the thermal coal business. The metallurgical coal, like we get out of the Rocky Mountains, is a completely different thing. Let's just hypothetically say uh, metallurgical coal is $100 a ton. Well, the thermal coal, the, the coal dirt, is about $10 a ton. So it's dirt cheap, and what they're banking on now, the only two markets in the world are India and China. When they stop buying this stuff, there's no market for it anymore. So they're trying to ship as much of this stuff out of here as fast as they can over the next five years. Uh, and that's why they've uh, applied for and received permission to ship it out of the Fraser docks because Westport, out at the, the ferry terminal there in Delta, they're pretty much at capacity now. They can't handle anymore. David, thank you very much for chatting with us. Jim, I look forward to next uh, month's conversation, and I'll tell you how to build a happy city in three easy lessons. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Have a good day. You're listening to the Goddard Report on TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. Our guest has been David Chesney, White Rock, B.C. City Councilor and Editor of the White Rock Sun. If you'd like to email us any comments about the show, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of Howe Street Media Incorporated.